Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three of the sword series. I'm trying to close this out. Sword sometimes refers to an knife-like object made of a metal used for cutting or stabbing, whatever the case may be. And sometimes in the Bible context, sword refers to war or maybe a war on a national scale or on a personal scale, as in being attacked. Now on the community page, I did a video on why God hated Esau. Oh, the horrors, the, the Bible instructors, so-called, uh, in the church world, so-called, will tell you that God loves everybody. But when you read the Bible, it says God hated Esau. And then they'll tell you, well, you know, yeah, he, God really doesn't hate Esau. He just loves him a little bit less than Jacob Israel. And yeah, except for when you look up the word hate, in the Hebrew, it's the same word when um, in the book of Psalms, when God lists the things that God hates, like uh, murderers and false accusers. And uh, yeah, you know, yeah, God loves murderers just a little bit less than, you know. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it, it's no wonder the so-called Christian Western world is falling apart. But uh, but I did a Bible uh, you know, on the community page. I did a study on why God hated Esau. And also, who are they today? Oh, yeah. Who is Esau Edom today? Uh, Esau married two Hittite wives and a daughter of Ishmael, which the Arabs claim they are the descendants of Ishmael. So you have Esau and Ishmael having a merging of the bloodlines. So... Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 27, and I'm just going to cover this briefly. You want to know more about it? Go to the community page. Click on Esau, Edom. Who are they? Where are they today? And why God hated Esau? Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right, so I hope you know the story in Genesis 27, where... Jacob, Israel's mother, comes to Jacob and says, your father is going to bless Esau. So you need to uh, dress up like your brother and take the blessing. And if you don't know that story, man, you need to be reading the King James uh, book of Genesis. I mean, Genesis is the foundation for the entire Bible. You know, when you hear people say, well, I'm a New New Testament Christian. No, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. You don't take somebody else's mail and apply it to everybody. You know, if I get a credit card offer in the mail, can my next door neighbor say, hey, I got a credit card offer? You know, no, it's addressed to me. Of course, I don't like credit cards, but I'm just, you know, I'm just saying, you know, you can't take Israel's mail and hand it over to the entire rest of the world. It don't work like that, big dog. Uh-uh. No. So, God made his covenant with Adam, reconfirmed it with Noah, and I'm skipping around here. Then with Abraham, and then Isaac, through Jacob, Israel. Now Esau 
Esau and Jacob were were brothers. But God didn't do, God didn't confirm the, the covenant with Esau. No, he was rejected. Read the book of Hebrews. I got a, uh, I'm, I mentioned that too in the one of those two videos I mentioned. That is on the community page. So, Jacob steals the blessing. Well, not really. It was in God's plan, really. Um, Isaac was a fool for wanting to bless Esau. And his, his wife was actually <laughs> smarter than he was, if you ask me, uh, by making sure that Jacob, Israel, got the blessing. So... So when Esau found out that uh, Jacob Israel had gotten the blessing, we're going to start in 30, verse 34, Genesis 27, 34. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he, Isaac, said, Thy brother came with subtlety and hath taken away thy blessing. And he, Esau, said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. Supplanted, you know, tricked. He took away my birthright. No, he didn't. Esau, you liar. You sold it to him for a bowl of beans. Probably lentils, that's what I understand. I mean, really? Esau, uh, when you're the firstborn, God had a law that the firstborn would receive a double portion, a double blessing. And the firstborn belonged to the Lord. So, it's funny, I was the firstborn of my father. I guess I, got, I, guess I belonged to the Lord, I don't know. But um, the firstborn belonged to the Lord. Why do you think in the uh, book of Exodus, when God killed all the firstborn of Egypt, all the firstborn belonged to the Lord? So he said, okay, I'm going to kill them all, except for those that have the blood of the lamb on the door. And Jesus is the lamb of God, his blood. He's also the door. He's the door of the sheep. Yeah. You know, there's just, the Bible just ties in with each other. It really does. So, Esau's crying. He took away my birthright. Boo hoo hoo. You sold it to him for a bowl of beans, Esau. You even said, what good is this birthright? I mean, can you imagine... God gives you a, a, a blessing, a gift, and you despise. He, the Bible actually says Esau despised his birthright. I mean, can you imagine? Uh, somebody goes to a lot of trouble to make uh, give you a gift, and you despise it, you hate it, you don't even want it. You sell it for a bowl of beans? Really? You see... Esau so, saw no value in God's blessings. So thank you, uh, Jacob Israel's mother, for trying to set things right. So, um, he, Jacob, took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, listen to this carefully. Behold, I have made him, Jacob Israel, I have made him thy Lord. And all his brethren have I given to him for servants. So Jacob Israel was to be Esau's Lord. And Esau was to be the servants of Israel. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. Blessing of food. What, what race or and countries in the world 
have been blessed with food. You think about it. When there's a natural disaster, what countries send food all over the world? Of course, that's going to change because God's anger is on the nations that no longer honor him. I mean, I remember when I was in high school, Nicaragua had an earthquake. We collected food and sent it to them. They, the government air, airlifted all that food to them. It probably went into the world market and all the politicians probably sold it and made money. Probably nothing went to the people, but, you know, you try, right? So, God blessed Israel with corn and wine have I sustained him and what shall and what shall I do now unto thee my son and Esau said unto his father hast thou but one blessing my father bless me even me also O my father and Esau lifted up his voice and wept and Isaac his father answered and said unto him behold thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth uh, fatness. What's the difference between being fat and being skinny? Well, you know, <laughs> 20 or 30 years, right? Uh, yeah. You wouldn't believe I was skinny as a rail in high school. I was like 118 pounds when I went into high school. I remember that. Used to wear a 29 waist. Boy, that changed. But, um, the thing is, if you don't have the food, you'll never be fat. Yeah, that's why communist countries always leave their people on the verge of starvation. Because you can't fight if you don't have any energy and no food. They're always on the verge of starvation. Always. That's coming to America and the West, people. Europe, the European Union, the UK. Oh, yeah. So he's telling them, thy dwelling where you live shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. Now, you got to have rain, you know, dew of heaven from above, because if you don't, your crops aren't going to survive. Verse 40, listen carefully. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Esau was to be a man of war. By thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion what does dominion means it means uh it's where the same root word for dominate comes from you know being uh, the ruler and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke jacob israel's yoke from off thy neck well, people, here we are today. Esau, Edom, lives by the sword. They have dominion, and they've broken the yoke from off the neck of their neck. Guess what? According to Josephus, a Jewish historian that lived around the time of Christ, and uh, from what I understand, he was a Christian, or became one. Um, he said that the Herod, King Herod's, the, the family, was from Esau, Edom. And back before the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the Roman army, they had genealogical records going all the way back to Adam and Eve, from what I understand. But once the temple was burned, nobody knew, well, maybe the family knew where they came from, but you couldn't prove it. So, um, think about it. It was sort of like a, a census. But that's why these all these genealogies were in the Bible. You know, and so-and-so begat, so-and-so who begat, so-and-so who begat, who begat, who begat. You know, the Bible was very, very meticulous about documenting bloodlines. And it, it told everybody, don't marry into the Canaanites, which Esau did. 
And if you look into the Canaanites, you will find that they were uh, satanic human hybrids. But uh, the modern church world, oh, they hide that little thing, but I've got proof of it. You know, there was a reason why the Lord said, don't do it. And of course, the uh, church world will point to the exception and not the rule. Like uh, Simon was called a Canaanite in uh, one of the Gospels. But does that mean he was a Canaanite by blood or that he lived in the land of Canaan? You know, uh, I wasn't born in Florida, but I've lived in Florida probably 85% of my life. Does that make me a Floridian? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, my birth state, I've only lived in my birth state around three years. So, basically uh, less than 5% of my life. So, uh, you know. But uh, the thing is, when Israel came out of Babylon... They had intermarried with heathen wives, non-Israel. And Ezra 9, the book of Ezra, chapter 9, records where they said, divorce and separate yourselves from these heathens and their children. And those children basically hand the baby to the heathen mothers and send them away. And today, the church world would say, oh, that's horrible. But that's what was required. And do you know up until the 1960s, when they passed the so-called Civil Rights Act, it was illegal in many states for a white and a black to be married. Does that mean I hate blacks? No, absolutely not. But even Muhammad Ali possibly the greatest boxer that ever lived in history, he even says that it's wrong for blacks to marry whites. Does that mean he's a racist? Uh, funny thing is, is my older brother, uh, when he lived in Kentucky, uh, had his bicycle stolen by Cassius Clay, who became Muhammad Ali. You know, so, but... Uh, you know, that was the entire purpose of the marriage license. It was so that the state could examine the potential husband and wife and make sure they were of the same race. Of course, the federal government in around 1964 overruled state laws and said, nope, you can't do that. Blacks and whites want to get married? You can't tell them they can't. But you got to realize something. Back then, women wore long dresses to cover their legs. They wore head, scarves, head coverings. A lot of them did. They didn't wear thong bathing suits that show the crack of their rear ends. Uh, gay marriage was not even close to being acceptable. So were they a bunch of racists? That were horrible or were they a lot lot closer to biblical truth and oh by the way abortion was illegal doctors performing an abortion could have gone to jail for prison for murder so you tell me were people in the 50s uh, a bunch of racists that didn't know better or <laughs> you know it makes you wonder I think they were a lot closer to the Bible than they are now. So, all right. So, uh, verse 41, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning of my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So, is uh, Isaac's getting ready to die. And, uh, yeah, so he's getting ready to kill his brother as soon as uh, the days of mourning for his father are gone, right? And um, so, yeah, if you want to 
study more about this. I got go to the community page and watch my video. You could do that. I've only got over 1,500 of those videos, and many of them are over an hour long. Well, quite a few. I don't know about men. Well, I don't know. I don't like doing short videos. Once I get started, you know, what do, you, what do they call it? Being on a roll? Yeah. So. All right. Let's, uh, in Exodus 17, 13, and I hope I'm not uh, doing too much overlap on the last study, but it says, uh, and Joshua, and you know what, people? That is, I think that is the correct rendering of what people that are Hebrew roots and sacred name garbage uh, are trying to teach you that it's Yeshua, but I think it's Joshua. And Joshua means Savior. But of course, they don't want to pronounce it the right way. So, But it says, And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Um, you know who Amalek was? He was a grandson of Esau, Edom. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, let's take a little side note here for Amalek. Numbers 24.20, Balaam was hired to curse Israel, but it didn't work out that way. And when he, the prophet, and when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said Amalek was the first of the nations but his latter end shall be that he perish that he perish forever how long is forever oh okay in Exodus 17 8 then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim hmm so when Israel came out of Egypt Amalek came and fought with them. You know, brother against brother. Uh, Deuteronomy 25, 17. Remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way, when ye were come forth out of Egypt. Wow. Um, Exodus 17, 16. Listen to this. For he said, Because the Lord, the Lord, hath sworn that the Lord will have war. What? Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Wow. Generation to generation. Wow. It doesn't say, well, you know, Lord's going to have war with Amalek until Jesus comes, and then he's going to love everybody. No. No. I don't think so. First Samuel 15, 3. Now go and smite Amalek. Smite, strike, kill. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Kill them all. Wow. Exodus 17, 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I, the Lord, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Uh, does that sound like uh, the Lord's going to change his mind and, you know, uh, no. Deuteronomy twenty five nineteen, wherefore it shall be when the Lord hath, uh, when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies. Wow, Israel has enemies. 
But you listen to the modern church world. No, God loves everybody. No. No. God has enemies. Israel has enemies. But you'd never hear that. Wherefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out, blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. All right, well, let's read Obadiah 118. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. What do you do with stubble? You, it, it's what you use to start a fire with. And the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them. You ever heard of kindling a fire? And shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining. There shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Oh, Chaplain Bob, don't you know, that's the Old Testament. I mean, you know, now Jesus came and he just loves everybody. Well, my Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the Old Testament, it says, I am the Lord, I change not. Hmm. So, in Genesis 36... Uh, let's see. Verse 1. Genesis 36, 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan, the Canaanites, the satanic human hybrids, Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and uh, Aholabama, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. Uh, let's see. All right, skip down to Genesis 36, 12. And Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. So, there you go. I hope I've proven my point. Let's go read Leviticus chapter 26. Now, Leviticus was named uh, for this because if you look at the first four letters, L-E-V-I, Levi, Levi was the tribe, one of the 12 tribes, they were to be the pro tribe of the priests. Just like Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. They were specially set apart of the Lord for service unto him. So, uh, let's read Leviticus chapter 26. This is sort of the blessings and the curse. I did a Bible study on that too. Well, guess what? the West, the formerly Christian nations, we are in the curse stage now. Our blessings are almost gone. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols or graven image. Um, go to a Catholic church and what do you see? You see images? Oh, yeah. Neither rear you up a standing image. Neither shall you set up, set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. A standing image. Statue? Uh, do they have statues of a, depicting a woman with a child in her hand? And do they not bow down to it? Of course, they call it Mary and Jesus. I mean, really, dude? Yeah, they do. So, yeah. Verse 2. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. 
I am the Lord. Uh, did you know Jesus is our Sabbath? Oh, yeah. If, I, F, big if, if ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. And the land shall yield or increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Oh, yeah. Uh, you ever heard of the Dust Bowl in the uh, 1930s? The Midwest, the breadbasket of the United States, we had, well, they called it the Dust Bowl because uh, the, there was no rain. All the grass and everything else dried up and died. And then the wind blew and all the soil blew away. Yeah. Well, the topsoil. And why was that? Well, you know, um, my guess would be, hey, I'm glad you asked that question. My guess would be when the communists took over Russia, a certain religious group, starts with a J, um, they murdered millions of Christians. And then they had crop failures, which usually is what happens when you kill all your farmers. You know, uh, if you read, I think it's Genesis 4 where God cursed the ground for Cain and told Cain that he would never be able to grow uh, well, I'm paraphrasing. He wouldn't be able to grow food. Did you know there's a group of people on the face of this earth that cannot grow food? Huh? Did you know that? All right, Genesis 4. We're going to go there real quick. Uh, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother and slew him. He killed him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? You know, prosecuting attorney, never ask a question that you don't already know the answer to. Hey, dude, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Uh, hey, I don't know, man. Uh, what is it? My day Is today my day to watch him or what? And he, the Lord, said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Now and now art thou cursed from the earth. Hmm. Which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground. Now, how do, what do farmers do? They till the ground. They plow a, a hole, well, you know, a long hole, I guess you could call it. And they put seeds in it, and then they cover it up. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Oh, you could plant the seeds, but they're not going to bear any fruit to you, buddy boy, because I curse the ground for your sake. Yeah. Yeah. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Hmm. Have you ever heard of the wandering you-know-who? Yeah, a fugitive and a vagabond. They're going to have to move around because they can't farm the land. They have to move around. They have to steal it from other people or... Come up with an occupation where they can trade, you know. So they can't be farmers. Oh, they can take people's farm goods and sell them, but they can't grow them. So if you couldn't grow food, what kind of occupations would you have to be? Well, you'd have to be merchants, uh, maybe insurance, banking. Uh, yeah, you get my drift, right? A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, Oy vey, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Wow. 
so there you go. All right, so let's go back to Leviticus 26, verse 4. Then I will give you rain in due season, because you've obeyed my voice, right? And the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vantage, uh, unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. Why are you going to be able to live in your land safely? Because the Lord is going to protect his people when they're obedient to him. Verse 6, And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. What does the Lord mean by evil beast? B-E-A-S-T-S. -E Are they talking about four-legged creatures or two-legged creatures that knows the difference between good and evil? Hmm. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword, war, go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies. God's people have enemies, people. And God's enemies are my enemies, and they should be yours also. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. Wow. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you. Multiply you. And establish my covenant with you. God said, be fruitful and multiply. The world says, ooh, the world is overpopulated. Children are a burden. Kill them. Abort them. Get rid of them. We got too many people in the world. Yeah. But God says, be fruitful and multiply. And establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. Before you even eat all the old stuff, you'll be harvesting the new stuff. And I will set my tabernacle among you. And my soul shall not abhor you. Abhor means greatly hate. And my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you and will be your God and ye shall be my people. Now this is, you know, you obey me and listen to my voice and do what I want you to do. You know, I mean, let's face it. But the world will say, oh, God's trying to hold you back. But the Lord's like, okay, you want to be a Satanist and worship Satan? And when you get into trouble... Call upon Satan, let him protect you and take care of you and look out after you and, you know, do good things for you. People just have no idea. And I will walk among you and will be your God and ye shall be my people. I am, I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen, they're slaves. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. But, oh boy, here's that but. But if you will not hearken or listen, but if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statues, guess what? In the book of Leviticus, or is it Numbers? I forget which. Um... The, uh, the Lord gave you an entire set of laws. You know what the Bible said to do with capital crimes? Well, 
you had to have two or more witnesses to a capital crime. But if you were convicted of a capital crime under the mouth of two or three witnesses, you were to be put to death. What were capital crimes? Murder, rape, kidnapping, uh, Satanism, um, and then the, the LBGT, yeah, that crowd too. Uh, yeah. But now our courts despise God's statutes. They hate them. And they do the exact opposite. They murder the unborn. So listen to this. And if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. Oh boy, you guys don't want to listen to me? You want to murder your unborn? You want to tolerate all this evil and wickedness? No problem. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Verse 16, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption. I think that's cancer, but I'm not sure. And the burning ague. Ague? Uh, ague, uh, according to agu, agu. Uh, according to Webster, it is a, a fever where you have uh, chills and you ever been hot and cold with shivering? Yeah, that's what it is. Um, the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart and ye shall sow your seed in vain. You're going to plant crops for your enemies shall eat it. Oh boy. Verse 17. And I, the Lord, will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. Isn't that what's happening today? Those that hate the Lord's people, the Christians, those that hate us are in charge of us now. And ye shall flee when none pursueth you. You're going to be afraid of your own shadow. When you hear a leaf shake, you're going to run away. 18. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Oh, let me stop right here. I started talking about the Dust Bowl. Um, and I got sidetracked. Um, when the certain religious group took control of communism in Russia and murdered all the Christian farmers and they had crop failures and were starving. The United States government gave them wheat. We fed those that murdered the Christians. We fed the enemies of the Lord and gave them aid and comfort. So guess what happened? The Lord sent the dust bowl. Oh, you want to feed my enemies? Fine. You're not going to have any food either. How's that, buddy boy? The dust bowl. Yeah. Look up H-O-L-O-M-O-D-O-R. Look up that word. Make it, you know, it's not two words, it's one, but I'm trying to defeat the sense Sirs, yeah. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth. 18. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Oh boy. 19. And I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. What do you mean heaven is iron? Is there any water in iron? No. 
and the earth is brass. It's going to be hard as a rock. Why? Because there's no rain. And your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. You're going to plant, but nothing's going to come up. When there's no rain, there's no food. Neither shall the trees of your land yield their fruits. And if ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues, disease, upon you according to your sins. Verse 22. I've read this before. I've done Bible studies on this. Oof. This is where we are, people. Verse 22. I will also send wild beasts among you. Uh, two-legged, my guess, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number, make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. Wow. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you. And will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you. War. That shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities. I will send the pestilence. Disease. I will send the pestilence among you. And ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, famine, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat it and not be satisfied. What do you mean by weight? It's going to be so precious, they're going to be weighing it by probably by grams. Not pounds, not kilos, grams. It's 28.5 grams in an ounce, people. You're going to eat it and you're not going to be satisfied. You're still going to be hungry because there ain't no food. Because the Lord broke the staff of your bread. And by the way, people, this right here should be give you a big clue who Israel is. Staff of your bread. Asia, their main staple is rice. Europe, they make bread out of wheat. Think about it. Verse 27. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in Fury. Wow. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. Cannibalism? Well, it happened in times past in the Bible. There's a recorded instance of a... Uh, of when uh, I think it was Jerusalem was surrounded by the Babylonians, that people were killing their children and eating them. And guess what? According to some, what do you think natural flavors means? What do you think they do with all the leftover tissue at the abort shun clinics what do you think they do with all that some people say they use it for uh, sold it to multinational corporations that supply uh, yeah things that you eat I don't know how true it is and they deny it but you know what you got to realize they're of their father the devil who's a liar 
They are the children of liars. So I don't believe anything they tell me. Verse 30. And I will destroy your high places. People, when you look at all the pyramids all around the world, there's pyramids all over the world. Everybody thinks, oh, Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. No, there's pyramids in Eastern Europe. There's pyramids in China. There's pyramids in South America. And almost all of them have a flat top. They don't have a point. They have a flat top. They were places of worship, where, especially down in South America, like, you know, Mexico and South America, they did uh, human sacrifices. Yeah. They were places of worship. God says, I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols and my soul shall abhor you. God's soul will hate you and I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation and I will not smell the savior of your sweet odors. Uh, what do they call that? Incense? Oh yeah. And I will bring the land into desolation and your enemies that which dwell 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 therein shall be astonished at it. The enemies are going to be astonished at the Lord destroying his people. Verse 33. Wow. I hate even reading this stuff because I know where we are and our point in history. This is where we are. And I will scatter you among the heathen. And will draw a sword war after you and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste then shall the land enjoy her sabbaths as long as it lieth desolate and ye shall be in your enemy's land even then shall the land rest and enjoy her sabbaths as long as it lieth desolate it shall rest because it did not rest in your sabbaths when ye dwelt upon it and upon them that are left alive of you, a remnant people is going to be left alive because most people are going to die. I will send a faintness into their hearts, into the land, lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them. Can you imagine that? You hear leaves shaking in the wind and you run off because you're afraid because of all the terror. Wow. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, when none pursueth, and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. They're not going to have any power to stand before their enemies. And ye shall perish among the heathen. And the land of your enemies shall eat you up. Wow. All right, verse 39. And they that are left of you shall pine away. What does it mean to pine away? It means to waste away. You're just waste. You know, ever seen somebody in the final stages of cancer? That's pining away, wasting away. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity, their wickedness and sin, in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquity of their fathers, shall they pine away with them. But, listen to this, there is a remedy. If they shall confess their iniquity, their, you know, confess your sins, and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me. What do you mean trespass? Well, it means you're in the wrong place. You ever trespassed on land, private property? You're in the wrong place. Well, we're in the wrong place with God. We are someplace we shouldn't be. That's what trespass is. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, 
and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. See, God wants us to acknowledge our wickedness, turn away from our wickedness, say, we have sinned, and the Lord has given us everything we deserved. Hmm. Verse 42. Then will I remember the covenant then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. Remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And also my covenant with Isaac. And also my covenant with Abraham. Not the whole world. And also my covenant with Abraham will I remember. And I will remember the land. The land also shall be left to them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity because even because they despised my judgments and because my soul abhorred my statutes. God tells you what to do with evil, but our people won't listen to that. Oh, God loves everybody and, and he doesn't want us to kill evil people because they might come to Jesus and be saved. Those people are devils. You know, there's a reason why they're popular on radio and on TV. TV is filth. You really think if somebody was teaching the real truth of the Bible, they'd be on television? No way, dude. Uh-uh. No way. You think the FCC would allow them to be on? I can show you pastors. Or I can think of a half a dozen of them who tried to get on radio and the FCC was threatening to pull the radio station's license if they kept this person on because they were divisive. And guess what? With all these new laws that are being passed, hate crime laws, this kind of stuff ain't going to be on for very long. You know, so get it while going's getting's good. People, I'm telling you, it's it's getting to the point you can't even preach the truth anymore. The Constitution means nothing. Freedom of speech, my rear end. So, uh, verse 43, the land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity because even because they despise my judgments and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly. God's going to leave a remnant and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and law which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. And everybody thinks that antichrists over in the Middle East are what we're talking about here. Boy, I'll tell you what. They're deceived. But that's what happens when you bless those that hate and curse Jesus Christ. So, greetings everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your King James Bible. We're going to read from Isaiah chapter 34, verse 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, 
Ye people, let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. You see, the Lord writes the future as if it has already happened in the past. Verse 3. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcass, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Now, where do we read that in the New Testament? Let's take a look. Well, the parallel verse for Isaiah 34 and verse 4 is found in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 11, 12, 13, and 14. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 6 and verse 11. And white robes and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. That's also mentioned in Joel, the book of Joel, and it's also, uh, if I remember correctly, in Matthew 24. But this is what we were referencing in Isaiah 34, verse 4, verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So let's go back to Isaiah 34. And verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Now, didn't we read about being dissolved? In Isaiah 34, 4, it says, And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Well, parallel verse for that is in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord, ah, here we go, the day of the Lord, will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Ah, here we go. Word association, very important in the King James. The modern Bibles destroy word association. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved? 
wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Let's go back to Isaiah 34, starting in verse 5. Oh boy, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. What's it going to be bathed in? Blood. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. And upon the people of my curse? But the churches teach that God loves everybody. Do you know that there are people that God has cursed? Boy, you ask this question in a free will Baptist church and uh, chances are you bring it up in a Bible study and you'll be told to leave. Now, Idumea is part of Mount Seir, S-E-I-R, and it has reference to Esau and Edom. And if you listen to the so-called black Hebrews, uh, they'll tell you white people are Edom. Uh, well, there are those that are white that are Esau, Edom, but no, not all of them. Definitely not. I don't believe Christians are Esau, Edom. But take a look at this. Malachi 1 and verse 4. Well, let's take a look. We'll take a look at the whole chapter. Malachi 1.1 1, 1, The burden of the Lord, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. God does not love Esau, Edom. And if you want to know why, I've got a Bible study on it. Just send me an email for as long as my YouTube channel's up anyways. All right, so let's go back to Isaiah 34 and verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Now, in uh, Obadiah 1 and verse 18, if you want to know why God hated Esau, well, first of all, he despised his birthright, which was a gift from God. And he sold it for basically a bowl of beans. That's how much he despised the gift of the Lord. But secondly, he polluted his bloodline by marrying into the Hittite, Canaanite, seed line, which came from the fallen angels. Now, 95% of your churches approximately will deny that's even possible, but they're wrong. They're wrong. What can I tell you? Of course, they're the ones that tell you God loves everybody. But let's read Obadiah 1.18, and you tell me that God loves everybody. 
And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them. You ever heard of kindling a fire? And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Now Amalek was a grandson of Esau. Numbers 24.20 And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Oh, does that sound like uh, the Lord loves uh, everybody? Exodus chapter 17, verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. But God loves everybody. Uh, no. How about... Exodus 17, 16. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war, that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. War with Amalek from generation to generation. Yes, uh, you know, that's why the pastors discourage people from reading the New Test, I mean the Old Testament. Don't read this kind of stuff because you'll ask questions that will upset their theological apple cart. Make sure you read Genesis, I mean, uh, uh, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, God so loved the world that he's going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Bro, back to Isaiah 34. Verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Isaiah 34 and verse 7. And the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. Now, people, it's the uh, owners of the media that has a white horse with a horn sticking out of its head and calls that a unicorn with a rainbow behind it and funny little multicolored stars coming out of its backside, you know, as it's flying through the air. No. You know what a unicorn is? It's the Indian or Asian rhinoceros, as opposed to the African rhinoceros, which has two horns. Matter of fact, uni means one. Perhaps you've heard of a, a uniform, a uniform, one form. You know, all the police, all the military, they all wear the same type of clothing. And... Uh, Matter of fact, the Asian or Indian rhino, its name is even called Unicornus rhinoceros or rhinoceros. Look it up. So when did a rhino become a, a white horse with uh, sprinkles and a rainbow? You know, the uh, LBGT whatever sicko thing. All right, verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Ooh, that don't sound good for the unbelievers. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall become burning Pitch. What is pitch? Tar. Have you ever seen a road catch fire? Asphalt? 
Oh, yeah. Verse 10. It shall not be quenched night nor day. And that's this fire, right? The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation, it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the comorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall be called... I'm sorry, they shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortress, fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons, an habitation of dragons, and a court for owls. Now, dragons are always associated with uh, the devil and Satan as far as the Bible's concerned. Read Revelation chapter 12. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. What's a satyr? According to Greek mythology... A satyr is a, perhaps you've heard of the, the god Pan, half goat, half man. From the waist down, it's a goat, and from the waist up, it's a man. That's a satyr. I don't know why they, I don't, I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just saying that's what Greek mythology says it is. I don't know what exactly what it is in the Hebrew and I'm not sure anybody does that lives on this earth and the satyr shall cry to his fellow the screech shall also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest there shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow there shall the vultures also be gathered every one with her mate do you know in the book of Revelation it talks about the um, the fowls being filled with their flesh? Personally, I believe this is in a reference to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 19. Revelation 19, 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So the world's getting gathered to fight against the Lord. Verse 20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. 666. And them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain, with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Say that real fast five times. So, Isaiah 34, 15. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fall. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. And that, everybody, is the end of Isaiah chapter 34. 
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.